right, so work begins. I'm going to take these things down from the ceiling and move the furniture from this side of the room to this side of the room. Right, so we've made a start. We've took down the ceiling decorations and we have moved the furniture to just move back from the walls to just see what we're dealing with here. And, you know, if you've got a conservatory, you're probably really out of this. But um, it's like in these bits here, you know, you end up with all the mouldy black bits and cobwebs and it's basically just a spider's haven. It really is. Up there, you know, um, and uh, up there it's just cobwebs up there um yeah because basically nobody ever uses that conservatory in the winter especially in the summer uh this one's the south fierce and garden so the conservatory's fierce and south so we get sun all day long my really hot sun so it's too hot to use in the um in the summer and then in the winter it's it's too cold so as a result um yeah as a result we use a little color gas fire and when you put the color gas fire on it um it basically the heat it's the cold surfaces and causes condensation so when we've moved the furniture we've come across this problem it's are you ready guys this is quite bad so this is in damp it is um condensation caused so yeah that's what happens and we have actually we need to take down the light but we've removed the right so we've removed this cladden here this cladden we've removed from here and this is the ring beam it's exposed like the ring beam so this ring beam runs all the way around and the other side of this conservatory so I'll just show you on this side that's the well we took the blinds down and you can just see here the cap and board that just tidies it up we've took that off on this side so I'm going to give you a look at what we found behind it to give you an idea there you go so as you can see the ring beams are wet a bit short so it's all full of water and black condensation it's absolutely soaking so this is this is the other ring beam <coughs> it runs all the way around your conservatory like this <coughs> and what we're going to do is um we won't be um well, we will be uh, attaching into the ring beam some wood. So I'll, I'll explain exactly what we're doing when we get up to that point. So for now, it's just cleaning up and assessing, you know, the conservatory's condition and getting it ready, just prepping it ready for um, the work. So yeah, come back and um, when we get to the next stage, Right, we're just going to take down the chandelier.
Mind your head. I think it's still a good side. Uh, yep. Keep that in. It is. It is. Come on, puppies, out the way. Move, puppies. Just put some blocks of wood in the cavity. We'll do half wall cavity there. Right, guys. Um, as you can see, we've put the wood up here. I'll just show you exactly how we've done it so this is a kind of frame this is going to be blocked up this side of the window um, is going to be a wall so all we've done is used what was the wood size three by two, three by two pieces of wood Car Len Len carcass timber. lengths of wood which is carcass timber so that's all we've done put that in there boxed in the pipe there well we're going to box it in so the framework is there to box the pipe in so on the ceiling on roof ceiling we've got the CM timber which is 3 by 2 and we've just followed sort of the um what's that called rafters. the rafters yeah we'll, we'll just call them like rafters so we've just put, put them on there and we've put a support one across on each one like that and it comes up to there so that's where we are so far and yeah, we've we've done one half of it. Well, not quite one half, but so the reason why we've put this bit in is so the insulation goes in in here, well, in there, in there, and a piece in there, and um, it's for the plasterboard to screw the plasterboard onto. Otherwise, it'll just like want to come down. Um, also what we've done is um, I'll start here this is kind of supporting this like this piece of wood here so what we're trying to do is make it as self supporting as we can so what we've done is we've put this piece of wood here this one here and that's into the ring beam but then the ring beam's not supporting the weight because we've got these uprights here. So it's distributing the weight. So we've gone into the ring beam, but this wall here is going to be supporting. Um, what we've done with these is um, we've bird's mouthed them. Were they bird's mouthed? Yeah, over the, the top of the ring beam. So are they, these bits of wood, these here, and this one here, that one there, that one there. These were all birds mouthed over the top of the ring beam. If you have a look at this end one here, you can actually see it's not as good right. as it's on the top. It's on a small version, but it just right. shows it's you how it's... Just, it's just shows you that it's, it's slightly bird mouthed there. The other ones are birds mouthed a little bit more, um, but that's fine because this here this wood is a supporting um it's got some value outside. yeah this this bit's a supporting one here so um as i see all of these are birds mouthed over um and then this wood is put in between obviously for the plasterboard to be nailed on uh, screwed on 
so um really all all the ring beam is kind of um holding is this section here um this, this little section here so it's self it's supported there it's supported all across there and it's supported here so what we're basically trying to do is make this is um what, what's it Freestanding. It's freestanding as we can because at a later date we're thinking about um, maybe doing the outside as tiles like the the lightweight tiles but at the minute they're so pricey, they're expensive so we're going to wait until they come down in price like everything else when they've been out a while and we will go over the top of this with the, well not this obviously um, we'll, we'd have to put more wood and put the roof over the top of this. Um, but that's where we are so far guys right we've got this uh, insulation board this is Rectacell but um, they do various ones sort of you can get Kingspan, Thermatex um, Celatex I think there's a Thermatex one as well there's quite a few there's a few on the market and um, we've gone with this what's it called Rectacell one mm -hmm. so just putting it in now in this what's going to be a wall so the first piece is in and we're onto this it's very easy to cut Absolutely. and just mark where you want to cut Sound like Tommy Cooper, just like that. <laughs> and just slots in. Right. Yeah, if, if he's measured it right. I think it needs a little bit of tweaking. But it's very easy just to shave a little bit off. If you use a piece of wood to um, knock it in, so you want it to be as tight as you possibly can get it to the wood. Right, so the progress so far is um, we've put this this um, insulation board in the um, wall here and it's all up in the ceiling in this half. Now we've used 75 millimeter um, thermal board and the tape is, seven, this is um, foil. foil tape. Uh, so we've sealed the joints with the foil tape and that is um, 75 mil as well. So why we've done, sealed it with the foil tape is to stop any moisture getting in um, again when you do this make sure that your conservatory is dry um, we've been running um, a dehumidifier I don't know where it's gone it's behind the boards it's, be it's behind the plaster boards here so we've been running this dehumidifier and obviously wiping down surfaces as well now we're up to the stage here where we're going to be fitting the plasterboard and this is the plasterboard here so um, this is nine and a half millimetre thick plasterboard I'll just show you there um, so this should be enough um, to because it comes in different widths you as well you use 12 and a half for ceilings and yeah woods. you would normally use 12 and a half for ceilings but um in this case we're using the nine and a half obviously because you know if the weight and things for all this is mainly free stand um free what is it yes. self-supporting yeah. um like really a ceiling inside of a ceiling 
um, it is it, it is this little bit here is resting on the um, ring beam of the conservatory but as I've explained we've put posts down here to kind of compensate for that so yeah that's where we are so far next step is putting the plasterboard on right so the plasterboard's going up now so that wall is done there and got some boards on the ceiling so it's a case of just doing all the way around here yes it's a start okay so we've got the boarding up for the first half all in place all the joints all scrimmed and ready for plastering a little bit of filler in along here just because this board when I went to cut it or, or rather when I went to cut the other piece um, it was a bit short so rather than cut a whole new board for the sake of about five ten millimeters I've just used it and and filled it but uh, otherwise that's fine so that bit just there that's going to get filled in later when I do all the, the wall and everything I'm just concentrating on the the new so that's all uh, as I say in scrim tape on all the joints ready to plaster which I will be doing very shortly okay so get this side done move everything over and then move on to the second side I would just point out because I'm sure some people will say in the comments the lines of screws here are onto the timber obviously which in turn line up with the roof beams the original conservatory roof beams so there's one there and there's one there now that gap is bigger than you would normally use for plasterboard um, normal stud work ceilings things like that 450 millimeter centers uh, that's actually more like 750 and it is almost square so it's sort of 750 that way and about 750 that way a uh, bit bigger than normal but this is a, a smaller board the insulation is behind it as well and I have gone a bit OTT with the screws just to make sure it's in and the reason we've done that is if you did the normal sort of every 450 millimeters all the way there then you're going to see that from the from the outside um, so we didn't uh, we went, didn't want that, that to happen we wanted it to look as much like a conservatory from the outside as is possible so um, shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be an issue it's not very heavy it's only nine and a half mil plasterboard rather than the normal 12 and a half which is uh, is a bit heavier but uh, there we are so that's it ready for plastering start on this wall just here and see see how we go okay so there's the first uh, first wall plastered and the the boxing around the the soil pipe in the corner still got the roof to do so first one done now I might add I am not a trained plaster in any way shape or form I've learned by doing by picking up tips from people who are trained plasterers so I would call myself a good amateur so because of that once it dries probably tomorrow day after it will require a little bit of sanding and maybe a little bit of filling but there's the first one right we've actually done this side now that that's plastered um, we've lost some footage but uh, don't worry because we're still doing this side so I'll take you up to what we've done up to now so this this wall we had the um, wood put in the 3b2 stud work in then the Celatex board the rector cell board and um, insulation board in the gaps the wood as you can see we put the wood down on the beams and you can see there's two beam pour on this here and this here so we've got the one to pour on that one we've got one on this one and this is the ridge beam we've got one on there so it's basically just following where you've got your normal struts coming down and um, putting them on them using them as your um, rafters so to speak so there it is from this end so what we've done is we've put a wall plate 
So that, that's the wire plate going up there, all the way across. And as I say, this is like your ridge beam here. And then your little rafters coming off there and your noggins. So we'll, we'll finish off putting the rest of the wood on here. And then let's put some noggins in as well. And then we'll be putting the board on, the insulation board in between the um, the sections there. So um, the ceilings are plasterboarded and put the screw tape on the joints off the joints there. That's just a little bit of filler where the gaps were a bit big and we've started plastering. Um, as you can see, busy plastering now. Warmly, so, <laughs> sides already plastered and done. This is to be done. Right, so the ceiling has been all plastered. It's got its first, it's a wash coat on with water down paint. And now we're doing a panelling wall, a panelled wall. So this is it here. And all we're using is these strips well it's not it's um mdf board in how many mil thick about four six six sorry six mil thick mdf board cut into strips and we're just sticking them on cutting them and sticking them so just stand back so we've gotten to there so i've got all the way along there to do and all the way along there. Right, so I've pa started painting the ceiling and the panelling is done now. So that's what it's looking like. Excuse the mess. That's it there. And over here, I've actually started painting it and um, I'm doing it in this. Wilkinson's paint and it's called Natural Twine from the colour range. So I'm just painting all of the um, panelling, the strip bits first. I did prime them with this MDF sailor from Wilkinson's. So I put that on first and primed them and now I'm doing the first coat over the top of them. The natural twine. Right, so um, the ceiling's all plastered, it's all been sanded and painted and this is the finished result. I'll just stand over here so you can see. It's, I mean this is quite a compl complicated sort of ceiling with all the facets and the valleys and things like that. Um, so it has been a little bit of a challenge with all the angles but as you can see it's all much cleaner and much tidier I'll just go over to this side so that's what it's like finished guys and we did the whoops there's my shoe <laughs> we did the wall panelling as well uh, like the with MDF so I'll just you know um, yeah we did the wall panelling with the MDF so that's that's it finished and just 
that looks much much better much much more like a room now it doesn't really look like a conservatory people who's came in have said oh it looks much different you know you, it's more like an extension rather than a conservatory so from the inside yes it does look like that but from the outside it just looks still like the conservatory it, just the roof is exactly the same as it was so I'll show you the outside these are the oh sorry before I go and um, these are the the walls the you know this was all glass windows so that's that's the wall finished just a, a dwarf eh? it's not a dwarf wall it was a dwarf wall now it's like a full wall and the same wall for this side although you can't really see because I've got furniture here but it's just the same wall on this side and I'll show you what it looks like from the outside <laughs> 